Hi, welcome to a new segment. So, uh, in this particular segment, we will be talking about different types of excitations. Um, we have seen free vibration. Next, we will move ahead and do. Uh, we will learn about false vibration. So, um, I think it is better to have a knowledge or to know about what are the different kinds of excitation that we may see in a real life systems so let's start with this kind of with example problem so uh, say i have a pendulum okay now we have a pendulum here um, i'm giving it an excitation i'm just slightly disturbing the system by theta amount and then leaving it so the key thing to note here is once we excite the system then we are leaving the system system as it is we are not disturbing it any further so this is an example for a free vibration problem we are just providing some initial energy to the system in form of initial displacements or initial velocities then we are just leaving the system as it is so this is a free vibration problem and in 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 free vibration problem itself it will if there is no damping if there is no damping ideally if i uh, plot my theta with respect to time then it will go on and on and on and on there won't be any change in its amplitude but let's say there is some damping involved in the system which is the case for most of the real life applications for most of the real life systems there will be damping involved in the system then it will damp out like this the amplitude will damp out like this um, we have seen all these uh, things in the previous videos so if you observe this plot carefully there is a definite change with respect to time so these kind of responses are also called as transient responses because there is a change in the response as time progresses and it will die down after a while so the response against initial excitations are transient in nature that means they will change it will change with respect to time that's it so here we this is one set of excitations initial excitations are one set of excitations now let's move ahead and do the next type of excitation look at the next type of excitations i mean now uh, think of a washing machine in operation so we have seen washing machine vibrating like anything so what causes this vibration see what happens in a vibration this is um, let's say this is the washing machine now this is the idealized model of the system so i have modeled it as a um, i have modeled uh, the, using springs and dampers and let's say capital m is the whole mass of the washing machine then what happens when i'm loading clothes in my washing machine there will be always an eccentricity so let's say little m is the eccentricity in the distribution because normally the person who is loading the washing machine may not think uh, like oh i have to uniformly load it and maybe during operation also there is a good chance that some clothes will get accumulated to one side rather than dis getting distributed equally so there are good chances of things happening like this then what happens is there will be an eccentric force in the system um, that force will be m e omega square the magnitude of the force that force will be acting in this direction it will be acting in this direction so if i want to write the equation of motion in the y direction let's say i want to write the motion equation of motion in the right in the y direction and let's say i'm now i need one coordinate to um, quantify or to represent the position of my eccentric mass so that will be um, that will be this angle let's call this is omega t omega is the uh, angular velocity in which your washing machine is operating so let's say omega t is the inclination from the positive x-axis uh, for the eccentric mass then if i want to calculate what is the force acting in the y direction it will be m e omega square sin omega t so if you keenly compare this particular case with the earlier one in the earlier one initially there was an excitation then there was nothing but coming to this case there is always uh, throughout the operation of the system there is a 
definite force acting on the system throughout the operation throughout its operation this force is acting and moreover it is changing or it is proportional to functions like this the functions like sine function of sine it is proportional to sine it is proportional to sine function uh, where the argument is omega t so this kind of uh, excitation function they are called harmonic excitations the reason be is very simple where the here the force is varying similar with uh, to a sine or a cosine function then excitations can be thought of as um, harmonic excitation another example uh, will be this one yes you, let's say you have a rotor we have we see this kind of rotors in uh, pretty frequently in engineering uh, appliances like uh, say turbines and always come across with these with these systems quite a lot so let's say there is an un eccentricity in this somewhere in the shaft from somewhere in the rotor so then here also similarly me omega square and let's say i want to write my equation in this direction which is perpendicular to the shaft then there will be a sine or a cosine term associated with it so this is also another good example where harmonic excitations comes into picture okay now let's uh, move uh, let's see a totally different system we know cam there are cams used in automobiles to efficiently open your inlet and outlet walls of your ic engine so this is an idealized mathematical model this is an idealized mathematical model of a system um, operated similar so here um, we have a mass this is the mass of the system here is our cam so this cam will rotate so accordingly this will go either go up or down now i want to more uh, study what the type of forces that this particular system will see this particular mass will see now let's go ahead and do that uh, here what happened let's say this is uh, stiff this spring stiffness is k2 and let's say this displacement is x and uh, let's say this displacement is y then if i want to write the external force acting on the system capital m then it will be k2 into x minus y where your y is your y this y displacement is controlled by your cam operation so what happens is there is a good chance that not a good chance the way how your fy the how your um, force acting on the mass will vary is will be something like this i'm plotting my fy with respect to time then it will be something like this see this is not harmonic this function is not harmonic but there is a definite period associated with the way how which my external force is varying with respect to time so this kind of excitations are called periodic excitations periodic excitations see in this case also it is not an initial disturbance it is acting it is there throughout the operation of the system but it is not directly proportional to your cosine or sines it is varying in altogether in a different sense but this is periodic but the good thing about the uh, this is we can make use of the technique called fourier series and convert any periodic function to a infinite sum to an infinite sum of sines and cosine functions and then we can tackle the problem for the time being let's move ahead to talk about a different type of excitation so this is an another type of excitation um, let's say in this figure i'm showing you a simple satellite here you can see the solar panel once again as i say it all the time apologies for my poor drawing so here this is a solar panel and this is a boom and this is basically a satellite mainframe or whatever you can call it see uh this is this how your satellite may look once it is put in to orbit or put into space because um, you see all your solar panels and your booms in a in the deployed condition in a deployed condition but you have to keep in mind when they are launched in using a launch vehicle they will be in their stored configuration stored configuration so uh, you now you have to use a pyrotechnic or an actuator to effectively open this up or deploy this one 
when it is deployed there there is a definite force acting on the system so if i want to study uh, the vibration that my satellite will be seeing then i have to model that force so in that case oh, sorry for my x axis was going zigzag so i think i will um, update it so let's say i want uh, so now to study the vibration of satellite or how my vibration characteristics of the satellite i should i want to know how my force is that force at that time of deployment it varies with respect to time then say it will be something like this let's say let's say for arbitrarily if you look at this function keenly it is acting throughout the time throughout the operation of the system but it is not periodic this is not harmonic this kind of excitations are called aperiodic excitations aperiodic excitations the technique to solve this is slightly um, complicated it's a bit out of the scope of the this video we use the technique of impulse functions to calculate or to find out what will be the response of the satellite or the system against this kind of an excitation which is aperiodic in nature let's move ahead to the last and the final type of excitation that we are talking about let's talk about a different kind of excitation see in all the earlier three excitations we have seen uh, excitations of this kind these kind of excitations are deterministic in nature deterministic in the sense they have a definite functional representation which connects the excitation force with time this is for this was the case for harmonic excitation this was the case for periodic excitation and this is the case for aperiodic excitation but now let's take take an example uh, let's say um, I have a launch vehicle here I have a launch vehicle then um, we all know that at the time of launch there are tremendous amount of loads will be generated so the structure has to take all these loads and a, a large amount of acoustics noise will be also generated now think about some we need to cal characterize the vibration characteristics or the vibration response of the structure somewhere sitting here the structures may be interstate structures or your base shrouds and all and maybe um, your satellite also will be seeing a load so you want to characterize all these things when we are characterizing all these things uh, let's say to know what kind of excitation these structures are seeing i'm putting um, uh, a sensor here or, or somewhere in the satellite um, to characterize uh, to measure my force with respect to time now for a one what is a launch let's say for one launch um, when i'm me measuring my force with respect to time it will be something like this This is like this at one at the same look at one location. Let's say this is a location F1. F1 is seeing this kind of a load for a for a launch, for a launch for a one. Let's say that we are launching monthly, even though it is a bit unrealistic. But even then, we are let's say we are launching um, every month. Uh, in the next month, the same location. If we are measuring F1 itself, the we are if we are measuring the force experience at that particular point see um, the response is different sorry the excitation is different so the reason for this is that there are a lot of variables like your temperature at that location how your solid motors are ignited what is their characteristic what is the wind condition on that day so there are a lot of things which will in affect this particular uh, uh, thing this particular excitation so these things are called indeterministic so the response of you don't know how exactly your f1 of t will behave so this is an indeterministic thing this is an indeterministic this is an this is indeterministic but there are set of there is a definite there is a separate area called random vibration which will try which will the whole aim of that particular field is to estimate the response of structures against this kind of loadings which are completely random in nature this kind of system we encounter mostly in regular uh, regular life regular day-to-day -day life because most of the things are random in life random in the whole nature
so uh, just to sum up everything um we have seen actually we have seen uh, initial excitations then which which can be called as free vibration which will be fall in the category of free and free vibration in the category of force vibration we have seen harmonic excitations mm, we have seen periodic excitations then we have seen aperiodic excitations and finally we have seen random excitation as well so in this course my focus will be in attending to or in explaining to you what will be the response of a structure or a system against this kind of excitations against the harmonic excitation and against periodic ex excitations we have already looked into the case that what will be the response of the system if you disturb it initially we have seen it well and through in the initial set of videos thanks for watching